My name is Chris Sara. I'm the Director General of the Department of Seniors, Disability Services and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Partnerships. It's really important for all areas of the Queensland Government to be looking to partner with uh, First Nations Queenslanders in whatever way is possible. Um, and we've done okay at this. The reason it's important to keep doing it and to do it more uh, is because the data is screaming out at us that we have to do better at this. The Queensland Government's Reconciliation Action Plan contains many elements which I, which I won't go into, but essentially it's a, an explicit commitment to conduct a high expectations relationship and to set about trying to make things right in terms of the relationship between the government and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and communities. Our department drives on behalf of all of the Queensland government the local thriving communities agenda. And what that is, is, uh, is, is not a program, but it's a systemic reform that's designed to uh, enable authority to sit closer to community. It's about reaching out to embrace local leadership um, and uh, invest authority in that local leadership so that we can make better uh, decisions about how we do service delivery and how do we do service design for our remote and discrete and indeed all of our um, communities where Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Queenslanders are, are living. It's an effective reform and uh, I'm confident that it will deliver and in fact it's already delivered. You know we saw in the COVID response where we had to reach out and embrace local Aboriginal leadership, local Torres Strait Islander leadership in what was a very tense um, time um, and a very tough time for a lot of people. But it was senior levels of Queensland government engaging directly with uh, very senior Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander leadership so that they could be armed with the, the best and latest information um, in terms of what was required for their communities and so that we could be armed with the b very best information from a grassroots level. And the outcome was that we had zero cases of COVID in any of our remote and discrete communities. That's a fantastic outcome for anywhere in the world, um, but it just shows the, um, it shows what can be had when we take seriously the relationship, when we are committed to a high expectations relationship and where we reach out and we embrace the, the leadership of local Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. You know, through programs like the QUIP, the uh, Queensland Indigenous Procurement Policy, it's an explicit commitment to invest in uh, Indigenous businesses. And we've seen the level of investment in Indigenous businesses uh, increase over the last few years. And we're on track to see that target of 3% of addressable spend um, in Indigenous businesses. Now that's a good outcome because uh, it's an explicit kind of demonstration from the Queensland Government. It's saying to Indigenous businesses, hey, we believe in you and we want to buy what you have to offer. Further down the track, it's good because it stimulates business, uh, Indigenous businesses and it sees more Indigenous businesses who are more inclined to employ more Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people. And so there are victories to be had at so many levels when we can have an explicit commitment to engage in this kind of way. It's also important because as First Nations Queenslanders, we bring a tremendous amount of talent um, to the rest of the community of Queensland. And so it doesn't make sense to let such an untapped resource go untapped. You know, I get really excited when I see my nephews uh, working around Bundaberg doing uh, back burning on various places using traditional burning methods. So it gives them an opportunity to be connected to their sense of culture, but it also contributes to the well-being of, of country, um, which is not just Aboriginal country now, it's it's all of Queenslanders, we share this country. And so it makes sense to embrace First Nations Queenslanders to play an important part in looking after country so that it's good for everybody. From July to December in 2020, we saw $172 million invested in 389 businesses. That's a fantastic outcome. And it sees our um, 
investment in addressable spend for Indigenous um, businesses rise from 1.9% up towards 2.4% of addressable spend. So that shows that we're trending in the right direction towards that target of 3% by 2022. Um, and along the way, we see um, Indigenous businesses becoming wealthy through those processes. That's a good thing. We see those businesses employing and engaging uh, more young Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Queenslanders. And we also see mainstream Queenslanders uh, getting confidence in Indigenous businesses um, and more willing to engage them. And that's got to be a good thing as well. In other areas, we see explicit commitments to engage Indigenous businesses um, through processes that identify uh, big projects as Indigenous specific businesses and so with that comes a commitment to identify opportunities to subcontract Indigenous businesses so that they can be a part of um, building these big projects and the infrastructure of Queensland. When I think about the future from here I'd like to see us get stronger and stronger in terms of this explicit commitment. I like to think that uh, we're understanding the value that First Nations Queenslanders bring to the Queensland community and, um, and that we get excited about that and we tap into that more and more. Longer term, I'd hope that um, there's probably no need for such explicit programs because it's just part of what we do, you know. Um, we reach out to the people who've been at the margins and we recognise that, you know, they've got value to offer uh, and contribute to what is a great Queensland, the greatest state in all of Australia.